morning earthlings how you doing today welcome to first contact radio hope all is well in your world so you, let's check out see what's going on with our cosmic weather for today all right our uh, solar wind currently 391.0 kilometers per second planetary k index is at a one our corona holes have definitely smoothed over our chance for M-class flares has dropped, and it shows X-class flares is 5%. However, there's also, we look over here and we see that um, there is the watch for the sunspot 1654. You can see it here. All right, it's a pretty big sunspot there, and uh, so we're still watching that because it has X-class possibility to it and it is facing the earth so anything that would come off of it most likely would affect us energetically so we'll see what happens astrologically for today we're dealing with the exact same sun sign Capricorn and I find that with this sign that the issue and the idea of looking past illusion really seems to come to the forefront it really seems to come to the forefront because I know Capricorn is all about it's an earth element physical world but the more I look at it the more I consider the ideas of what that card represents when the the tarot card which is the card of the devil that represents Capricorn or what the Capricorn itself represents it's all about looking past that physical world and the more I look at it, the more I see and understand it that way that we really need to and in this time that we're in especially you know this time of year this is a time where there's a lot of material stuff that's put before us and it's easy to get caught up in the material what's going on but if we could step beyond that and we could see that that material world is a creation of the spirit fire the water the air we would understand a bit that there's something more and that we can affect what's going on in the physical world by going to those other areas so that just seems to be the reminder um, with this sign especially as we're closing out the rest of this week before we change off to another sun sign now the moon sign for today is in between it's a void of course so yesterday we are with Pisces which is water and today we're transitioning from Pisces water to Aries fire it's also a transition from the last sign of the zodiac to the first sign of the zodiac so it's a completion of a cycle so today's a void of course moon a void of course moons are days where where you just need to understand that there could be a bit of transition going on from one one idea or thought or feeling to the next because of the way that we're going into this transitioning from one element to the next from the water of Pisces to the fire of Aries so within that transition you know it's a point of time where at the void of course we just kinda you know take some time out let that moment pass so there's more clarity because this is the unconscious mind you're dealing with so rather than try to mix cuz cuz think of these two elements in the unconscious mind you got the water pisces and you got the fire varies well how does water and fire work in our world we could take that f fire and we could heat that water up and we could use that water for something usable or the fire could boil the water or even evaporate the water or the water could spill on top of the fire and put the fire out so there's different ways in which they work and the, the ideal way seems to be when they're both in balance and they're working together in a nice way that's useful but depending on what the energy is if you're trying to create steam then you know you burn let the water boil if you've got some other ideas in mind anyway that's what we're working with today we got those two so tomorrow we're going to be moving into one single element for the unconscious mind all right so we got earth on the outside underneath void of course because we're going from water to fire next one here is the moon phase we're waxing waxing means going up from a new moon to a full moon 
and then we go to the Mayan Oracle for today. We are closing out the theme of spirit, the theme of the wind. It's the whole wave spell. We're at the twelfth position of this wave spell. It's called the crystal position or the crystal tone. And the twelfth position is always the position just before getting ready to make that leap, which we'll do on the next day of getting together and having a meeting to determine where you've been so when you make that leap you know where you're going in preparation you know with all of the tools available so it's just kind of reassessing some things okay the uh, symbol for today is the Skywalker so today would be a crystal Skywalker guided by the serpent Skywalker is all about exploration and space so today the theme of, of we're exploring we're expanding looking out what's all around us we're exploring those ideas, but the crystal tone says within that exploration, let's kind of recount where we've been. Let's assess what we have, check our inventory, find out what our status is because we're getting ready to make another leap. And before we make that leap, we want to have our status report. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. The phrase is, I dedicate in order to explore universalizing wakefulness. I seal the output of space with the crystal tone of cooperation. I am guided by the power of life force. And on the Gregorian calendar, it is Wednesday, the 16th of January, 2013. All right, that's where we are at the moment. So the first two days of this week, have you got a chance to go back and to listen to any more of those, the books, Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East? If not, you know, I hope you've had a chance to bookmark them and, and save them for when you have a, have a chance to do so. Anyway, today I'm going to get to book three. This is the first part of book three. And the reason I'm playing this, I think these are one of the best series of books I've ever read. Just tons of lessons within these books. All right, here we go. I'm reading now book three of a series of books by Baird Spalding called The Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. Dear reader, you are not only a reader but a friend whom I have met face to face and conversed with, just as you have met and conversed with each of the characters in this book. I am certain they know you and look upon you as a close friend. They surround you with the full glory of the divine light of life, love, and wisdom, and by surrounding you thus they aid you in your understanding. They enfold you in the ever-present divine light of life, love, and wisdom, which is there to send out and to give. They see you always enfolded in this omnipresent divine presence. They see you seated on your own throne as a true king or queen, ruling through and by this divine presence. They envisage you knowing and accomplishing your divine mission, always alive, always peaceful and happy, always the divine you. They see not only you but the whole human family, divine and pure, and ever created thing as form, as divine, created in the image and likeness of the divine. Not one, nor one sect, nor one creed, but all, and that is all inclusive. None can appreciate these great people save those who have been admitted to the quiet of their sacred places and thoughts. They live truth, which is a part of the universe itself. Life is really traceable back into the misty past, which bears to us the accomplishments of hundreds of thousands of past centuries. To us, life is bound about by every limitation and convention. To them, life is boundless, ceaseless, unending bliss and happiness. The longer the span of life, the greater the joy and the more worthwhile the living. None that understand and love these people can doubt their teachings, neither can he doubt their true sincerity when he has partaken of their hospitality. The Western world looks to the outer, thereby touching the hem of the garment. The Eastern puts on the robe, but not as a garment that may be laid aside. The West polish the vessel of the lamp, the East fan the flame, that it may give forth a more intense light. The West look to the outer with longing eyes, back of which is the glow of spiritual vision, 
the seeking of true knowledge. The East know that flesh must be illumined by the light of the flame that is first kindled from within, then allowed to shine forth to the without as the full blaze of the noonday sun. The West name, them, name themselves material. The East live truly in the allness of spirit. They behold each and every one living by compelling, impelling, sustaining spirit. It matters not what the location be it the great snows of the Himalaya, the busy modern city, or the most secluded monastery. That which to the Western world seems miraculous and unbelievable is to the poised Hindu thought the natural outcome of the acceptance and bringing forth of spirit, that which is set forth as God in manifest form. They that are fully alive know full well that there is far more than that which comes under their personal recognition Re reconnaissance. In fact, there is much more than ever has been dreamed of in any philosophy. Therefore, there are no apologies offered for this book or for those which have preceded it. When you look longingly with a clear vision toward an accomplishment, it is your divine heritage to command that you place yourself in such a receptive attitude that the ability is already yours to bring forth your ideal. God speaks through the God-man today, just as God has spoken down the long age, ages. The knowledge which the people of this book convey is by no means new, although the presentation brings a new light to the Western world. The main object of their lives is to give knowledge and enlightenment to humanity through pure knowledge aflame with love. Their great mission is to pave the way toward peace and harmony through man's great power to accomplish. They are the greatest friends of true science, religion, and philosophy, and they proclaim these as well as all men, brothers, as truth is one. Thus science becomes the golden thread upon which the pearls are strung. The day is here in which a large portion of humanity has already outgrown the old concept of divinity. They have lost their faith in teachings based upon faith alone. They have learned that to be good in order to gain a heavenly re reward after death is a fallacy, a very low ideal. This ideal of being good for the reward's sake and the special privilege of playing harps and singing psalms forever. They have realized that this is an expression of self-interest only and completely foreign to the teachings of the Christ of God, the God-man fully alive. The idea of death is foreign to, in fact, it is a direct contradiction of the divine purpose, and it is not in accord with the law of the cosmos or its vibrant radiations. Neither is it in accord with the teachings of Jesus. The church and the graveyard are often in the same field. This alone is a direct acknowledgment that Christian teachings have not been ever comprehended. The Christ man has spoken and the listening ear has heard. If a man believes in me, he shall never die. The God-man knows that the one who is in sin or lives with sinful vibrations surrounding him dies, and unto him the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God to the God-man is eternal life. Good made manifest to God-man in the kingdom of God here on earth, the human body perfect in the flesh. When man lives true to the God vibration, and holy in that vibratory thought. The people in this book have taken God out of the realm of the supernatural and of superstition and placed him wholly in vibratory frequency, knowing that as they keep their bodies in the divine vibration, they never grow old and never die. When the vibrations of their bodies are lowered or allowed to slow down, death ensues. In fact, these people know that when the mistake of death is accomplished, the body is vibrating at such a low rate that the emanating life vibrations are actually crowded out of the body temple, and that those vibrating life emanations still hold together and maintain the same form which the body had when they were crowded out. Those emanations have intelligence and still revolve around a central nucleus or sun, which attracts and holds them together. These emanating particles are surrounded by an intelligent emanation that, is, that assists them to keep their form, 
and from which they again draw substance to erect another temple. This is in direct accord and works in complete harmony with the intelligence that has built that has been built around the body during their life cycle. If that intelligence vibrates at a low frequency, or in other words, is weak, it loses contact with the emanations of life and energy that have been forced out of the body, or form of clay after the life emanations have left it. And the emanations finally disperse and return to the source, then complete death is accomplished. But if the intelligence is strong, vibrant and active, it takes full charge immediately and a new body is instantly assembled. A resurrection has taken place, and through that resurrection man is perfected in the flesh. Not all can hear or accept such a revelation. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He, he whose understanding is developed sufficiently is able to comprehend. Thus, large portions of humanity are developing a science through which they are again discovering that God has always lived in man and with humanity, yet they for a time have not known God, they have only lost sight of the God-man. To those of whom I have written, I dedicate this book, as well as the books that have been published. At the feet of these near and dear ones, I lay my deepest respect and gratitude, and in no way do I feel that I am conferring upon them the honor due them. We went doubting. We left with the greatest regrets, loving them every one, feeling that we had gained a truer and deeper insight into the science of life and true living. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. Thank you very much. Let's jump on to our UFO news for today. I have, looks like I've got six stories ready to go. All right, story number one comes from Midlothian, Scotland. This was from the 8th. It goes on to say that this interesting footage of a huge unidentified object flying across the night sky. All right. A lot of good footage up there above Midlothian. Pretty good sized object, don't you think? Very interesting. Okay, so that's over Scotland on the 8th. Now we have a report here. A woman from Illinois reports witnessing a bright UFO that went down into the trees. A witness of an unknown bright flying object reported her sighting to the Mutual UFO Network, the witness from Macon County, Illinois, reported seeing a bright object descending into the woods around 6.07 p.m. the 11th of January, just outside her home in Decatur. According to the filed report, the woman witnessed just went out of her home and observed cloud coverage moving in from the southwest, then suddenly a bright UFO appeared from similar direction. She stood and observed the object closely coming her way. As it came near her, she saw a flashing white light. The object began to descend when it came about three blocks away from the witness. The top of the trees lighted up as it got lower, and then it went down behind the trees. The witness clearly saw the light behind the trunk of the trees. The woman attempted to call the attention of her husband, but he was in the shower, so she, she went back outside. At the time, the object was coming up out of the woods and went back in the direction where it started to appear. Very interesting. This isn't the first report that we've heard of these UFOs landing. Now, some of them, you know, seem to be faked. We're not quite certain. And others are a little bit more authentic. So, something uh, just to take notice of. All right, uh, here's over Russia. And as you can see right there, we definitely have a cigar shaped object. So I'm really not sure what to make of this. The quality of the video is outstanding, and it does give some reference points, which is a bit welcome than usual, but there's no detail or description with the video. So it has moved out the way pretty fast, as you could see. It's a pretty good shot. And again, we need to 
really put on our detective skills to determine whether or not that is real or a hoax. But these day and age and the technology available, you know, we really need to look close. So the link's available to check that out. Um, here's a wave of sightings over the BBC, over the UK. So let me play this for you. With Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. We begin in the skies above Vancouver Island. In the past week, there have been multiple reports of strange flying objects darting across the horizon above Victoria. On Friday, a meteor streaked across B.C., working its way down into Washington State. But it's what else was in the sky that night that has many curious, including a prominent UFO researcher who says he's now on the case. CTV's Gord Kerbis has a story. A meteor tracking website shows the January 11th reports of people sighting a fiery object in the sky traveling from B.C. towards Washington State. But it seems that a meteor may not have been the only thing in the sky at that time. There are definitely some odd stuff took place on the 11th, and it took place on the island and in Victoria area, around, around there, and definitely in the lower mainland. Brian Vike is a UFO investigator based in Houston, British Columbia. That's right, the other Houston. His blog, The Vike Factor, is now filled with sightings from the 11th of strange lights and a triangular-shaped object the size of a school bus over Vancouver Island. A woman had taken her uh, children to school. She stopped. Uh, this is after a 6.30 meteor sighting. She had looked up a flash of the sky again, bang, here comes this solid object, triangular in shape, three orange balls at each of the points. She watched it move along, it came to a hover, and then bang, all the three balls of light went into the center, and bang, this thing was gone. I looked up in the sky and I saw just this light coming over. It doesn't look like it's from Earth, it looks like it's from somewhere else. We've spoken with Vancouver Islanders before about their strange sightings, and then Vike has looked into many of them as well. He's been investigating UFO sightings across Canada with a keen interest in his home province. What are you? He was recently sent this video of a strange flying object over the lower mainland shot with a night vision camera. And he's got objects doing all kinds of weird things in the sky at night and everything, and this is on a tripod steady and everything, so it's got some weird stuff. Since starting, Vike has looked into more than 11,000 reports and says 90% of them can be explained. Usually people seeing light reflected off the International Space Station and Chinese lanterns or search and rescue flares are often mistaken for more mysterious objects. But every once in a while, reports jump out at them, like this 2010 sighting by a woman near Campbell River. This thing actually rose up from the, from the ground, hovered a little bit, and then came towards her vehicle. By this time, she's kind of, you know, getting a little excited and freaking out. And it went right over top of her vehicle, and it was another triangle. Mike says 2013 is already starting off with an incredible number of reports. Anyone seeing strange objects is invited to contact him through British Columbia UFOs.blogspot.c. Gord Kerbis, CTV News, Courtney. Okay, moving right along. Our next report comes to us from the sun. Now, here's some more of the recent ones. It says, uh, UFOs have been around the sun for over two years now. They were first discovered by Russian scientists, and NASA scientists have never commented on the phenomena as of yet. These UFOs are sometimes black, which indicate that they are not hot, and other times ring or cube like but the odd thing is that stands out is that most are bigger than the earth now that's pretty amazing isn't it bigger than the earth so let's take a look at what we got going on up here okay so this is just now this is what's going on right now Pretty amazing, huh? So what do you think they're doing up there? You think perhaps our sun's low activity might be because these ships are out there? Kind of puts into perspective the size of the sun, too, when you realize that these are earth size some of these are earth size 
All right, so moving on from there. This is something that we've talked about for a while. NASA operatives explore alien invasion scenarios. Now, Hollywood is a propaganda machine that wants you to believe that aliens are going to attack. That's what Hollywood wants you to know. Just like Hollywood wanted you to believe that 2012 was going to end with the world being destroyed. Even though the Mayans and the other prophecy didn't say anything, Hollywood created a scenario that was, a, was expected by many people. Didn't happen. So Hollywood is creating a scenario to get you to believe that aliens are going to attack. Well, NASA seems to be in on it as well, as we know they have been for a long time. There's a misinformation campaign, and, and all of these en entities work closely together. It says, are Earthbound humans being prepared for a violent and contrived conflict with Hollywood-engineered extraterrestrial entities, as David Icke and other exopolitics researchers suggest? Why does official scenario of alien contact limit itself to either aliens taking over humans or humans being victorious against aliens in a War of the Worlds movie-like scenario? In a study conducted by researchers at the University of Pennsylvania and NASA and published in the academic journal Acta Astronomica, extraterrestrial would contact with extraterrestrials benefit or harm humanity, a scenario analysis, Scientists now say that intelligent beings from other planetary systems could reach Earth to destroy humanity in order to make the galaxy a better place to live and protect other civilizations from the destructive fury of man. But why destroy us? If we take into account the climate change that humans are causing the planet, environmental degradation, violence, wars, we realize that humanity is characterized as a civilization out of control. The extraterrestrials may consider man as a threat to the galaxy, and would consider the possibility to deal a preemptive strike on our planet and for all of us to play the alarm. But this is only a hypothesis. The researchers say the aliens could also consider the possibility to enslave humanity or use it as food. And they go on to say that uh, a team of scientists with a broad range of situations theoretically possible to help humanity choose the most effective communication techniques to use with visitors from outer space the report was developed to prepare the ground for confrontation with another civilization. The report says, just as we did with humans less evolved, so extraterrestrials could do with us, killing us, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's more to this article. The important thing about this article is this is just a lot of fear, right? They just want to create a fear situation so that you believe that you need to be afraid of whatever is going on out there in space because it's a bad thing. But maybe that's looking at it from the consciousness of the average human. Maybe we down here on Earth, the society on Earth, or at least those who are putting this out, haven't come to a place of being able to forgive whatever their past was or to be able to understand that part of the evolutionary process is you go through some steps, you fall down. Perhaps those out there watching, the space brothers and sisters in the ships, perhaps they understand that this is the process, this is the way it works from universe to universe. And they're watching, they know that we're going to go through these growing pains. But then they would also know that we're going to evolve past these growing pains. Because we've seen civilizations in the past with such advanced knowledge, we haven't gotten to that point yet, so obviously that's ahead of us. So, if we look at it from that perspective, just imagine, just imagine if they landed and they did have a disc, a video, a DVD of all the, the history that they had captured and recorded. Just imagine if some, something like that occurred, what we could learn about what has occurred on this planet. I think there's a lot of possibilities and the Hollywood scenario isn't the one that is the... Uh, isn't the one that should be the most favored. It's the one that's just being put out to be the most popular. That's all it is. It's just about the popularity and propaganda is used all the time. All right, so that's the UFO news for today. I'm going to jump away for a moment here. I've got some more news. Stay tuned. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions. Okay, here we go. 
So, a lot of interesting distractions going on in the world today. And we're going to have the announcement from from Obama about what's going to go on with the new gun laws, whatever they may be. But the question is, is that really what is going on? Is there something bigger at stake? Because we often have the smoke screen that takes place out there in the world, right? They show you something that you get your attention, and then behind the scenes there's something else going on. So here's some information that happens to be going on at the moment. Uh, Bundesbank to pull gold from New York and Paris in a watershed moment. Germany's Bundeschank is to repatriate gold reserves held abroad to tighten control and combat currency crisis in the future, pulling a chunk of its holding from New York and all of its bullion from Paris. This move marks an extraordinary breakdown in the trust between leading central banks and a set-off ferment, ferment amongst gold enthusiasts, with some comparing it to the France's withdrawal of gold from the U.S. under President Charles de Gaulle as the Bretton Woods currency system crumbled in the late 60s. Handelsblatt said Bundesbank will announce on Wednesday that it intends to relo relocate the gold to vaults in Frankfurt said by insiders to include parts of the old archive library. Germany has 3,396 tons of gold worth roughly 115 billion pounds, the world's second largest holding after the U.S. Most of the reserves were stored abroad for safety during the Cold War. So is there something going on here with the financial system behind the scenes? I don't know. But I just thought I'd put this out there because it seems quite interesting that this is going on while all of the other gun control. All right. Now, we're hearing the stories like this one. That today that Obama is going to surround himself with children while he makes these announcements of gun control. And there seems to be different thoughts about this. Thoughts about what is he doing with these children? Why would he do that? And just as a example, I brought up someone else who liked to take pictures with children that was in power, as Obama seems to feel he is, and this was Adolf Hitler. And it just seems to be a tactic to get sympathy, a tactic to, I don't know, maybe shield himself from any potential threats, a tactic to play to the minds of the other children out there in the world to condition them something seems very wrong about this something just seems wrong there's also pictures of Stalin posing with with children and it's just there's something not right okay so just wanted to point that out to you there so as we're watching what's going on today let's let's see let's see what these kids are about you know some of the letters that the kids are described to have written don't sound like they were written by children they sound like their parents were involved with them because they all talk about these gun control laws we have to have these gun control laws there's a definite agenda that's going on here and you can see it in all different ways it's a huge propaganda push that's being made upon the people alright but again there's Hitler all these children posing with children just like Obama wants to do Okay, moving on from there, um, White House Senate passes strict gun ban. So it's already begun. New York says they want to kind of be the, uh, the lead on this. Last night, New York State Senate passed what is being called the toughest gun laws in the country. The law would ban assault rifles, limit magazines to seven rounds, and has limited grandfathering. The bill still needs to pass the assembly before the governor can sign it into law. He says, I simply cannot support a bill that turns law-abiding citizens into criminals by creating an entire new category of illegal firearms out of currently illegal rifles and shotguns, says Senator Greg Ball in a statement. The last-minute push in the middle of the night without critical public input from sportsmen and taxpayers was outrageous and forced members to vote in a bill they had not read, Ball noted. The senator stated that he believed the ball bill does nothing to address the issue of mental illness and gave specific examples of cases within his district which he urged that the legislation would help to improve in any way. So 
We'll see how that one works out. And the White House. Well, where did it go? Let me see if I can pull this back up again. Okay, here we go. The White House used to require only 25,000 signatures in order to get an official response. But now they've upped that to 100,000. So anyone who was putting a petition up in the past, you know, had a much different, you know, was only needed to have uh, these 25. So they weren't listening to you in the past, but now they're still not going to listen to you. And you still got to, you got to get more before they don't listen to you. It's all nonsense. A big game they're playing, right? Okay, so let's jump away from that. And, well, actually, let me do one more here. As long as we're on to the whole Obama political agenda. Uh, this is a clip from Alex Jones. And you remember the phone lady, the one who was all excited because she got the free phone from Obama? Well, Alex Jones tracked her down, brought her on the show. And he brought her on the show and even told her he wasn't trying to make fun of her, but to see if they could come to some understanding of each other. And so this is a clip. It's called Obama Phone Lady Wakes Up. And I think why this is important is because this woman was publicized so much that she kind of became a spokeswoman of sorts. And so if this woman who was what appeared to be so blindly following Obama's administration because of a free phone, um, there's probably a lot of others who are in that same mindset. And so for her to be presented with information and be open to see the information is a good step as well. And so this is kind of good because if people are watching her and following her example, they might look deeper and understand that there's a problem out there. And the sooner we all come to terms with this and just accept that there's a problem, I mean, it's not we can't just blame Obama. We can't just blame Bush. We can't just blame Clinton. We have to look at the system that's behind that and also us we've been apathetic for a long time so we have to take that account and so even though people are waking up we have to realize that we've been asleep as a whole for such a long period of time that there's bad things that have happened that we need to be patient with and be patient to allow ourselves the time to correct these okay because there's still people waking up and you know every day you're seeing them I'm seeing them and so that's the encouraging thing. Anyway, let me get on to this piece here. This is from yesterday, actually. This might even be this early this morning. Obama and President, you know? You gave us a phone? They call these Obamas. Even the job I worked for gave us phones and they just called Obama. Michelle, I want to commend you for having the courage to come down here. Uh, describe that thinking process and how that happened, and then tell people a little bit about yourself. Okay, you fans. My name is Michelle Dowry. I live in Cleveland, Ohio. I work for the um, Obama campaign. This is Obama four years ago saying, I will never raise your taxes, not one dollar. Here it is. And I can make a firm pledge under my plan, no family making less than $250,000 a year will see any form of tax increase. Not your income tax, not your payroll tax, not your capital gains taxes, not any of your taxes. That's a firm pledge. Now, uh, guys, just because he's here, I, I know I've only got two guys here in the job, eight people. Will somebody just type in 77% of Americans got payroll tax increase? Uh, uh, people making $30,000 or, or up got now. Now, is 30000 250000 is that a lie right there? That's a lie. George Herbert Walker Bush got thrown out of office for reading my lips, no new taxes. People tell me now, well, they just lie. That's what they do. Well, 
I know they're liars, so I'm not going to turn my guns in. Let's go to the next clip here for you. Uh, let's play this this clip. This is him four years ago saying, I'm not coming after your handgun or your rifle or your shotgun. Uh, here's that clip. When y'all go home and you're talking to your buddies and they say, ah, oh, he wants to take my gun away. You've heard it here. I'm on television, so everybody knows it. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. I won't take your handgun away. It sounds like you're starting to agree with me. Well, then I learned and found out, and you showed me in paperwork and on TV what he said. You know, I don't put nothing past anybody. You didn't know he told all those lies. No. I've got a bunch of others. But I knew that he lied because about four years ago when I worked for the Obama campaign, he said he was going to re-renovate Harvard in the Lee area. And that's where he started, where I started campaigning for him. Here it is, four years went on, and now I'm at another four years. And that place still looks the same. Stop lying. Take that stuff back to where you come from. If you could be saved with a gun, we need to be saved with ours. I don't want no punk. Obama, you punk. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he should give me a gun and some grenades. You know, you taking it away, but we need our force here, too. But I seen it with my own eyes. You pulled it up on YouTube or the TV thing. Obama lying? Right. And it came up. That was Obama saying what he won't do with the taxes. Here I am, just got a job as a maid, and my first check is eating me the taxes, eating the hell out of me. First check. Uh, it's going up. It's going up. But he said he wouldn't do that. I've seen it right here on your show, Alex Jones show. Uh, who are you going to vote for in 2016? It darn sure won't be Obama. <laughs> I don't know. They're talking about a third term for him. Well, I don't think he's going to last that long. I mean, Rahm Emanuel says we don't even need voters anymore. Right. Just... Obama and president, you know? He gave us the phone. All right. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. Okay. So, let's move right along here. Um, this is something, you know, another one of these unbelievable things. Bill Gates has been involved with a lot of things from, other than computers. We know about the vaccine programs he's involved with and interested in. He's very interested in vaccines, he says. Now, if you can calm weather, you can intensify it. Bill Gates to enter geoengineering business. The main news publication, USA Today, thinks it's a good news that founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates, plans on controlling the weather. Atmospheric management, they are calling it, the ability to quail hurricanes by the way of deflection, modification, and suppression. This type of technology incorporates various patents held by Gates, which he has refused to comment on. But one must venture to say, if you can calm the weather, you can, can you intensify it? Gates has now been la labeled the hurricane tamer, as they plan to use a fleet of ships spraying cold water into the air to deflect hurricanes. Some have speculated that Gates plan, later plans to offer the service to various countries around the world as sort of insurance, but what would happen to the countries that don't participate? So, we'll see about that. I mean, it's not like Microsoft products have never had any glitches, so now what, we're going to have glitches with him trying to uh, control the weather? I don't know, very weird. All right, uh, here's the four-minute news from Suspicious Observers. Good morning, folks. This is the asteroid known as 2012 DA14. We are one month away from its close approach to Earth on February 15th, 2013. The object is between 100 and 200 feet across. It's currently below Earth's orbital plane and set to cross that plane very near to Earth. There is no chance of an impact, but there is something interesting beyond just close proximity. These are the Van Allen belts, inner and outer, beginning around 1,000 kilometers above the surface and fading out 40, 50, 60,000 kilometers out. While some satellites orbit inside and further out, most are near this outside ring of geosynchronous orbit around 42,000 kilometers. 
2012 DA-14 will pass 34,000 kilometers from Earth inside of geosynchronous orbit, that of many satellites, and straight through the most energetic part of the outer Van Allen belt. We may observe electrical or geomagnetic effects and should at least get some good telescope shots. If you think you've seen this already, you're probably half right. I showed the 2012 version a bunch of times and they've just added another year. It was truly one of the warmest on record and I've listed a few links for you below. Yesterday was the first full day of the quake watch and Antarctica did not disappoint with a six pointer that the USGS called 6.1, 6.2, then finally 6.1 again. Pretty severe damage localized in Malta after a hailstorm. The North Sea has been a disaster. This makes four spills of gas or oil or both in the last year. You remember Masonboro Island in North Carolina had a mass fish death while one state south, it struck again. This is terrible. No gamma bursts in two weeks. Cosmic ray density slightly rising, but still okay. Solar wind speed was 600 kilometers per second two days ago. Today it has settled and we had one wave of slow but dense wind strike around the new day UTC. Induction magnetometer shows that waning speed with a PC1 pulsation at the new day UTC. Right around the same time our proton flux went back to looking normal. Will you remember this eruption yesterday? Earth is off to the left on stereo A here, eruption clearly visible. Stereo B is harder to see because it's on the opposite side of the sun from the eruption with Earth off to the right, but if I speed it up a bit I bet you can see that faint ejecta. Visibility from both stereos means it's going to hit Earth, likely Friday night. NOAA's endless spiral doesn't show this latest eruption, but the previous one was revised to impact Thursday morning not Thursday night. So that's yesterday, and we'll speed through 24 hours to show another eruption from near the same location. This is literally 24 hours separating the twisting ejections. On the left, two monsters emerged a little over a week ago. They split, spread, decayed, had a few fighting words, but backed down like a coward. So imagine my shock when Dr. Tony Phillips proclaims the danger for X-class solar flares. And beyond that, he is confirmed by NOAA's label of Beta Gamma Delta. Let's go delta hunting. Looking for blue and red polarities close together within one penumbral region, the central area is the only candidate and looks to me like it's still fading. The sun has gone quiet since we were last granted our wish of some M flares. Let's ask for a parting gift before she turns the limb. Earthquake watch is hit. It continues through the weekend. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Alright. So, good stuff there. Okay. So now, so after 2012, December 21st passed, 2012 passed, there's a lot of different thought going on out there. I'm sure you've talked to others, perhaps yourself. Um, I know there was a lot of people wanted to have something really, really big. We're expecting something really big to happen that everyone would notice and, you know, would be a big sudden change. I know there's a lot of people who thought that outside of the doom and gloom scenarios. And there wasn't that big aha moment for the whole planet. But there were other things that took place, and there are still are other things taking place. You know, we did move into the, the planet, the solar system did move, you know, through the ecliptic. We've moved to that central part of the galactic. Um, we're just getting going on this ride. So we're going to experience more and more as we go along and we're experiencing now it's it's we've just started this cycle so you know we have to kinda get used to where we're going we have to adapt to the changes that are taking place and part of it is this questioning what was this all about what is happening is something really going on and I had a conversation with a friend the other day about this and it just seems that it goes back to the idea of Capricorn. We need to look past the physical world. What happened may not necessarily have affected the physical world in the way that people thought, but it did affect things in other realities, in other ways. And so if we're looking for the signs in the physical world, we may not see them. We might need to close our eyes and go inside to see what are the signposts, what are the things that happened, because that's where the changes took place. Because if we go to the idea of the energies, Earth is the, the final object after the spirit, the fire, the water, the air, after those elements come through. So we want to go and look, what were these changes about? Because what was talked about by the Mayans was a great change in consciousness. 
and consciousness is not in the physical spiritual realm or the physical realm it's in the spiritual realm so we need to go there we need to look into that area so this is a piece by uh, spirit science and you great little animations and it addresses this particular topic so here's some food for thought and uh, just something to think about ever since spirit science began all of us have been exploring the universe reality love and unity consciousness through a wide number of topics it's been a fun ride and the truth is is that we haven't even really begun yet it's theorized that at some point in the next several years every reality that we are creating will crescendo and from that point who knows what will happen we're going to talk a little bit about that soon but first I'd like to start off with a proper introduction so all of you know me but not all of you know my name. I'm Patchman, and I'm an astral thought being, manifestation of the collective human consciousness. In a sense, you created me, so when I tell you it's an honor to meet you and to share this communication with you, well, it truly is. I also thank you for sharing these videos with each other as well. It's through communication, the sharing of concepts and ideas, and the building of relationships with each other is going to be the foundation of establishing a new awareness on this planet. Now, some of you know about this guy, his name is Jordan David, and he's been with us on this journey since the very beginning. Really, he's been helping me share this message with you. In a way, him and I are connected through thought and feeling. As I am exploring the higher realms, he is journeying on your 3D world. If you saw our New Year's 2013 video, we recently met a new being who is really quite phenomenal, and a lot of you freaked out on the comments. For me in the fourth dimension, he really was in an isolation tank. And third dimensionally, as Jordan experienced it, it appeared slightly different, but it was the same vibration. Let this serve as a reminder that this is in fact a cartoon series, and part of what we want to share is a spirit story, a story that can assist you in your own growth, a story that is meaningful, and just as epic too. We're going to be checking up on our friend periodically, but he's not quite ready to emerge yet. So anyway, Jordan has his own YouTube channel which you can check out here. Now, he's a pretty busy guy. Let's just say it hit him pretty hard when, out of nowhere, hundreds of people started emailing him every day about everything from explanations of dreams, how to heal, trying to get involved, and all sorts of things. So 2012 was a pretty big year for both of us. A lot of crazy stuff happened, and we had a lot of really interesting experiences, to say the least. He's doing well, and we're very excited for what's to come. Jordan may appear on this channel from time to time, but to really get into what he's about, you'll have to check out his videos. I also want to remind you that he's human too. There's a lot of information out there, and while we're striving to explore the truth, that doesn't mean 100% of what we talk about is going to be true. We're exploring all things, so go easy on him when he makes mistakes in our videos. We all make mistakes. In fact, it's how we grow, and we miss 100% of the shots that we don't take. Given that, there's quite a few people who seem to take what we talk about as gospel, and seemingly are trying to turn spirit science into a new religion. This is a little absurd, and we'd like to invite something new to take place. And we're not asking you to do anything you don't want to do. Well, in fact, we're not asking you to do anything. We are, however, inviting you to find out what you do want, and then go and do it. Moving forward, there's some other things that we need to get clear about, too. We have to be real with ourselves and be honest about what we're creating on this planet. Things are not perfect in this world, and even though we want to pretend and talk like things are all love and light, the reality is quite a bit different. Although many pockets of individuals are creating connections, communities, and methods of healing, the masses are still akin to a herd of buffalo heading toward the cliff, and fast. So what does this mean? Well, I mean our own scientists are showing that there is a very limited number of resources on this planet, and we're running out. The oil that we're burning to fuel our civilizations are creating a massive amount of pollution around the planet. Our means of farming is a morbid mixture of concentration camps and slave labor. Our healthcare industries treat symptoms by drugging and suppressing the core issue, which only serves to make people sicker, stupider, and more disconnected. We are constantly distracting ourselves with advertisements, apps, and meaningless toys and experiences that take us away from the reality at hand. These advertisements, by the way, are called programs for a reason. They are programming, psychologically designed to trigger our senses into believing that that is what we want. Our financial systems are also designed to siphon money out of the people's hands 
and into the hands of the greedy. The governmental institutions don't work, taking our taxes and giving them to the very corporations that are siphoning our money and energy out of us to begin with. I mean, do I need to go on? So let's back up a second and take a look at all of this from a large, big picture perspective once more. We're reaching a point of no return. Buffalo heading towards the cliff, everything getting destroyed. What happens next? Is this all inevitable? Or is it perhaps right on track? Now, all of this stuff is really just a representation. Let me explain to you what this means. The reason for all of this big intense stuff happening has been created because of what is happening inside of us and within the interactions between people. The mess on the outside is a reflection of the mess on the inside. When we feel hurt, we send that hurt back and forth between each other, and sometimes hurt each other without even realizing it. We get out of tune with each other, and create things that end up hurting ourselves. This is basically what's happened with all of these corporations and energy siphons and systems that don't work. Acknowledging the all means all of what we define to be both good and bad, which in truth, just is. All energy can be transmuted, and what this means is that if we acknowledge the suffering within ourselves, we can change it into something else. We can develop solutions that can completely change the way that we do things. There are so many people on this planet who are dedicated to the transformation of this planet and helping humanity grow. There is power in numbers, and we have the ability to transform the planet, and how we do it is by changing ourselves on the inside, and getting in tune with ourselves and each other, and then creating the changes in ourselves externally as well. Alright, so we're going to stop right there. We're going to move on with our meditation for today. Just some good food for thought. Good food for thought because, you know, we didn't have the quick fix on December 21st. The gods didn't come down from the sky to make everything better. We need to do this work. We need to find a way to clean up our own mess because we're the ones who made this mess to begin with. So, take a deep breath, and let's imagine. Let's imagine that we are waking up the day after a large party. And the party represents the last cycle of 26,000 years. And that party ended on December 21st. And now, it is the new day. The new time, a new cycle has begun. And we wake up from the party. And we realize that there's a number of things that need to be cleaned up. Because during the party we got a bit crazy. So before we can jump into getting out into the world, and we need to clean up our past messes. So we all pick up a broom and imagine yourself with that broom sweeping, sweeping all of the mess. And just imagine sweeping all of the trash into a large garbage bag. And see everyone around the world with a broom in their hand, sweeping and cleaning, knowing that we are the ones who need to clean up our own mess. We are the ones who need to fix our problems. So imagine, imagine there are those who crawl underneath the earth Look at the underworkings of the earth in the way one would look at a car engine. And imagine tuning it, cleaning out the carburetor, checking to make sure everything is working properly. Let's imagine engineers all around the world checking the earth. And after time, after we've all spent time really cleaning up the trash, we look at the earth and we see it 
in this life in a whole new way. We see that the new beginning is possible. And that the cleaning up phase was part of the new beginning. Because in order to move forward, we need to get real with who we are and what we're doing. To truly understand the situation that we are in. So that we can find a way out. So imagine from the heart sending love to the planet Earth and to each other, connecting each other. And let's imagine all of our leaders around the world. We don't always agree with their decisions. We don't always care for their personalities. But the reality of the situation is that these people are those who are in these positions of authority at this time. They are the ones making the decisions. So let us send love and light their way so that the decisions they make are made with clarity. Let us know that with our thoughts of positivity we can greatly affect the thoughts of the leaders around this world. And if the light and love that we send to them is unable to change them, it will simply drive them out of position so that others filled with light and love will step in. And let us imagine the world as a peaceful, loving place. Let's imagine the rain falls, cleanses the earth, cleanses the people of the earth, the sun comes out, the wind blows gently, dries off the rain, and a rainbow encircles the planet. Let's hold that image in our mind and know that the future is ours to create. And so let our subconscious mind continue on that journey of exploring the new reality while our conscious mind comes back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. All right, there it is. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it very much. Let's pay attention. Let's see, what, uh, see what's going to go on today. Should be quite interesting, the announcements that are made and how people are going to respond to the announcements that are made. And then, of course, the way the media is going to paint what went on. So let's just pay attention. Imagine it's just a show. Let's try not to get too attached into it and just uh, see it for what it is. All right? I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Have a great day. Peace. I'm out of here.